April 3rd, 1974. A massive tornado outbreak is underway in several states. If they went across Illinois and Indiana up into Michigan, parts of Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and ultimately even Georgia. Due to their limited technology, meteorologists are confounded by the severity of the outbreak. They were able to forecast the severe weather, but they can't see the tornadoes on their radar, so they can't issue advanced warnings. In many cases, their warnings come after tornadoes have already hit the ground. Communication networks are also limited. The National Weather Service still relies on an old teletype system. We could type on a teletype machine and it created a little ticker tape. And we could put the tape in a, a little box and go send and it would send to the news media. Very, very labor intensive. If a, t a piece of paper tape broke, you had to start over again. Very slow way to get the warning out. The sheer volume of messages put out on April 3rd overwhelms the network and jams teletype machines. The result is disastrous. Warnings come too late. Some messages never get through. At the National Weather Service office in Louisville, meteorologist John Burke erupts in frustration and anger. He took a grease pencil and slammed it down the desk. He said, we're not doing a damn bit of good. You know, we were putting out these warnings, people still getting killed. 6 p.m. near Huntsville, Alabama, in Limestone County. Civil Defense Director Spencer Black is aware of the disaster unfolding east of the Mississippi River and knows the stormy weather is headed his way. It's in Arkansas, it's in Mississippi, and they told us by 6 o'clock, you will experience some of the most severe weather that Limestone County has ever experienced. Black's office is ill-equipped for a disaster. We had two radios, one with the county government and also one with the sheriff's department. We didn't have anything. We were one of the poorest prepared counties in the state. Limestone County has no tornado sirens. 7.05 p.m. A tornado begins to tear through the Alabama countryside. Eighteen-year-old Donnie Powers and fifteen-year-old Felisa Golden are high school sweethearts. They are in Donnie's Mustang driving on a rural road when the tornado bears down. I could see clouds forming and I started getting scared. And I noticed Felisa, she went totally silent. She wouldn't say anything. It was raining so hard, the car didn't even want to go. It wanted to stop and stall. Suddenly, Donnie sees the tornado. There's only one evasive action he knows. I said, Felisa, open the door and get in the ditch. And when she opened the door, things started hitting us. I opened the door, and that's as far as I got. The rocks started coming in, hitting me in the face. And the wind was just, just very, lots of pressure inside the car. And I went through the windshield, and I don't remember landing. I was still in the car, and I was still conscious. And the car flipped three times that I know of. I was very scared that I would not make it out of it. A short while later, strangers see Felisa badly injured on the side of the road. Someone else finds Donnie in a nearby field. They are taken separately to the hospital. The tornado will carve an 85-mile path through Alabama and into Tennessee. A short while later, a second tornado bears down, and for nearly 20 miles, follows almost the same path as the first. The two tornadoes destroy or damage more than 1,000 buildings and 200 mobile homes. They also kill 55 people and injure more than 400. 
Limestone County had back-to-back -back tornadoes that hit the same community twice within an hour period. Supercell thunderstorms within the same line that wound up crossing almost the exact same path. That night, Felisa and Donnie see each other in the hospital. He didn't recognize me at all, just had this blank look on his face, and it kind of scared me. Two days later, Donnie begins to regain his memory. And I started remembering, hey, Felisa was with me, and that's when I asked about Felisa, how was Felisa? Every day for the next seven weeks, Donnie visits Felisa in the hospital. The experience brings them closer together. It showed us that life can be taken away from us really quick, and we decided that we wanted to get married and start our life, and we did. In all, 10 tornadoes tear through Alabama on April 3rd, causing more than $50 million in damages. Uh, we got about five tornadoes overturned here. The final death toll in Alabama, 86, with nearly 1,000 people injured. It was the worst by far and has been since that date. Within the space of five hours, six lethal F5 tornadoes have struck the Midwest and Southeast United States. 30 were ranked four or five. No other outbreak has come anywhere near that. Their paths shatter common beliefs about the behaviors of tornadoes. Scientists and the public learn tornadoes can cross mountains and valleys. They can also traverse rivers. The tornado that hit Brandenburg crossed over the Ohio River into Indiana. After the F4 roared through Louisville, it dispelled another myth, showing the public and scientists that tornadoes can strike metropolitan cities. We now know it's really uh, was just the fluke of the rareness of tornadoes, that they can really strike anywhere they feel like it when the conditions are correct. The 1974 super outbreak also ends a long-held belief about opening windows when a tornado approaches. People thought that it was uh, better to open windows because of a trapped higher pressure that was inside the house, and then when the tornado's low pressure went over, houses exploded outward. But as the outbreak showed all too well, homes are destroyed not by a change in air pressure, but by high winds. Instead of opening windows, people should immediately seek shelter. The next day, April 4th, 1974, Americans wake up to news of one of the worst tornado disasters in U.S. history. In just 24 hours, an outbreak of 148 tornadoes in 13 states had carved a path of destruction totaling more than 2,500 miles. More than 300 were killed, about 5,500 people injured. This was a pretty much unprecedented for, for the public and for the meteorologists who had to deal with it. As tornado outbreaks go, this is as bad as they get. The prospect of rebuilding is daunting. It was a mind-boggling disaster, and I thought, how are we going to get back to where we were? And how long is it going to take? For the forecasting community and tornado scientists, the aftermath of the outbreak is painful. If we had a better radar, we would have probably have done a better job. Better radar could have saved lives. This outbreak will change that and trigger a revolution in forecasting. The super outbreak is the number one event that uh, would have an impact on the way we operate today.